How's it going everyone and welcome back to the Outsiders Skirmish Gauntlet. This is a series where we take the Outsiders Blitz Starter Decks, upgrade them with a budget build in mind, play a game, and then do the exact same thing but with no budget. As you guessed it today, I am playing the classic ninja Katsu. I'm going to detail all of the upgrades that I made for the budget version of this deck and then we're going to showcase our guest, someone I am sure that you are very familiar with. And then he is going to showcase his hero, it's going to be Riptide, uh, and then talk about the budget versions. We're going to play a game, and then we're going to do the exact same thing, but with the no budget versions of these decks. So stay tuned for two excellent games of Flesh and Blood. Let's get started. And this is our budget list, over half of which comes from the Katsu Blitz starter deck. So this really does form a very, very good foundation to build upon. This deck is actually very inexpensive with one exception, and we'll talk about that as we go on. But we're just gonna talk about the key upgrades here. We still have Katsu and his Kadachis. We still have the Surging Strike, Whelming Gust Wave, uh, into Bonds of Ancestry combo. Uh, we are upgrading the combo with two copies of Dishonor. This is just a really, really nice card. You know, even if you're just following this up to a Bonds of Ancestry, it still gets that nice little plus two, so it's a zero for four. And if you can fulfill the whole combo chain, you can do some nasty work. Keep an eye out for this in the gameplay. Um, I also added in more Bonds of Ancestry. This is an incredibly good card. I added in the blue version of it to give us a little bit more redundancy for our uh, combo line here. We added in a new combo line. We added in one of my favorite ones. It is the wins combo ending with wins of eternity. The combo is basically 100 wins with as many 100 wins as you can play followed up by a wins of eternity. And why I really like this combo chain for Katsu is that they are all zero cost cards, so they function very, very well with what we're doing with this deck. They work well with the Kadachis, they work well with Katsu's hero ability, and they work well with each other. So you really only need these cards, you don't need very specific cards. This is a very non-fiddly combo chain, and I very much, very much like it, so... Yeah, we are running the 100 wins. And then for other upgrades, we, uh, let's, let's go over these ones real quick here. So we decided to go with uh, Ancestral Empowerment. This is just a key ninja card in my opinion. A great attack reaction, blocks for three and also draws you a card, fantastic. And then we're going with the new Katsu specialization, Visit the Floating Dojo, which uh, is a zero cost card. It's blue pitch, which is great, like I said, for Katsu, for our Kadachis. And then it also lets us set up future combo turns by getting back Surging Strike and any other card with combo, which is very, very nice. Keep in mind, this card does block for zero, which once again, pay attention to that in the gameplay. And then finally, the last card that I wanna talk about is uh, the big one here. It is Enlightened Strike. Now, most of the budget for this, is, I, this is about a $100 deck. Most of the budget are the Enlightened Strikes. If you take out these two cards, uh, this is about a $40 to $50 deck, which is very, very nice. And this deck plays very, very well. If you wanna upgrade it, I think E-Strikes are very, very nice. Once again, zero cost, works well with Katsu, blocks for three, and it can just be uh, a myriad of things. I really like drawing a card with E-Strike because it lets you um, draw the card, and if it's the last card you play this turn, if E-Strike is, then you can arsenal that card that you drew to help you set up for a really big combo turn. So I do like E-Strike a lot. It is an expensive card. It does still fit the budget here because most of the other cards here are very, very inexpensive. But if you don't have E-Strikes and if you don't have the budget for these, you can simply add in more Bonds of Ancestry. You can put in the yellow ones. They do block for three, they're a yellow pitch, and I think this card is just incredibly good. Every time I have a turn where I can Gust Wave into Bonds of Ancestry is a very good turn and it feels nice. So that is the budget version of the deck. Let's see what our guest has in store. What's up again, everybody? My name is Steven. I go by DM Armada on YouTube and on the internets, and today I am playing none other than Riptide. Riptide is a really cool new hero from Outsiders. I'm a big fan of him. He can be built a 
thousand different ways. He's really disruptive. He's also really aggressive, depending on how you build him. And this is the deck that I've put together on a bit of a budget. And it's actually a really, really decent budget as well. The only real big expensive cards here are these two Remorselesses. Outside of that, everything else is really kind of sideways movement from the original Blitz deck. I want to point this out. I think the original Blitz deck is actually incredibly well made, incredibly well put together, and very thoughtfully put together. It is designed to play disruptively with all of these traps, and then follow that up on your own turn by presenting six or seven with a terrifying on hit. So you have this back and forth, I disrupt you, and then I present value damage. And I didn't want to really mess with that too much because I want to prove that it actually works really well. So here's what I've done. Uh, we have over on the one cost arrows and one cost attack side of things, uh, we've got our death touches, our remorselesses. Uh, a lot of these are the same as they were in the uh, original Blitz deck with Withering Shot, Hemorrhage Bore, and Infecting Shot, yellow. I included Bolton Shots because it allows us to go a little wider, which is fine. I did not swap in the reds simply because I wanted to keep our ratios similar to what you find in the Blitz deck because this is a very easy next step list. If you want to go from the Riptide Blitz deck to this, it's very simple and easy to do. So your ratios don't mess around too much. I also included two drill shots because that card's just good. It's just really good. Uh, over here, we've got the four times scout the periphery. I included plunder run. Plunder run is banned in classic constructed because it's too good. And so if you thought you had to go and get the majestic premeditate, just play Plunder Run. It's like way cheaper. It's a rare. If you can get your hands on it, you're you're just golden. And then I also included Captain's Call because it falls on everything. The buff is really nice. It's a two plus two buff. It could go on any attack that we play uh, because we only play zeros and ones in this deck. And you can also choose it uh, to you know play it out there and give go again and then drop an arrow into your arsenal via Riptide's effect. Finally, I included uh, the extra tripwire traps and I included collapsing trap and buzzsaw trap because those cards are quite good. They are quite good. Highly recommend. As far as the equipment suite is concerned, we basically didn't touch anything except swapping out those one block boots for Snapdragon scalers. Um, this is an easy sideways move. It's really an upgrade in a lot of respects because just running, I don't know, iron rot legs instead of that, you just jam out the Snapdragon scalers and you're good. This is not an expensive upgrade. I mean, you're buying a couple of cards. Yes, these remorselesses are expensive, but in a lot of respects, they can be worth it. Uh, if you didn't want to play those, if you wanted to save your money, I mean, you could literally just put in infecting shots red. Uh, because they're that good. Or you can find any other Majestic Arrow that costs one and uh, does some beneficial stuff. Either way, this deck is fun and it's very solid. So let's go ahead and take this into Kel's Katsu and see how it plays. Yeah, let, let's give it a good old roll. Want odd again? Yep, let's, let's do odd. You are very good at this. It is odd again. <laughs> Ooh, odd again. Um, hmm. I'm going to go first. I'm going to go first. Let's just Sounds do it. Sounds good. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. All righty. Let's see if we can combo some cards. <laughs> well, maybe. Well, maybe. Combo some cards. C -c 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 combo breaker. Okay. Well, turns out the answer is maybe. Definitely maybe. Definitely maybe. Um, I would like to start by doing the traditional uh, traditional Katsu turn of attacking you with this Harmonized Kadachi for one. And I'm going to be pitching this blue Lunging Press floating two. So Kadachi for one. Okay. I will block one. Alrighty. I, I don't mind that. I would like to Kadachi for another one with one floating. I will take that one. Okay. Go to 18. No reactions. Alrighty, I think I would like to then attack with one of the only, oh, the only upgraded money cards for this list. I'm going to attack you with this Enlightened Strike, and I'm going to bottom this card here. The mode that I'm going to choose from E-Strike is going to be, let me take a look what's in my hand, um, it's just going to be plus two, so just a seven. I will give you six. How about that? I'll give you two two arrows, a falcon wing, and a drill shot. I'll 
I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take one. All right. Sounds good. Seventeen. I'm going to uh, go to the end of my turn and arsenal the remaining card in my hand. Sounds like a plan. I will draw up alongside of you. Sounds good. Cards for everyone. For you, for me, for everyone. Everyone gets cards. Okay. 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 Indeed. I'm going to uh, play Plunder Run Red. Ooh. I'm going to choose to Riptide down this card. Now, this is going to allow me to draw a card if, uh, you know, the next attack hits. Yes. Uh, on this turn. The next time an attack, I should say, hits. Uh, which is pretty good. That's a pretty good thing there. So, I am going to, from the arsenal, play this Withering Shot. And I'm going to pitch a Withering Shot. So, uh, this is coming for five with the on hit of giving you a uh, frailty token and the on hit of drawing me a card, but it does not have go again. I have a card in hand. Alrighty, so it's five. Doesn't have go again, but you do have good old snappy S. Got the good old snappy scalers. Um, that is accurate. Let's see what I want to do on my turn. I definitely want to play that, which definitely means doing this. Alrighty. Well, I would like to block for five. We'll block this Winds of Eternity and this Lunging Press for a total of five. Sounds good. I will arsenal this card and pass over to you. Cool. Sounds good. Alright. So, on my turn, on my turn, I think we are going to... Let's see. Yes, yes, I could, I could do that. I could do that. Um, yeah, um, I'm going to. Hmm. Yes, I think we have to do it this way. Uh, I very much like that these new Katsu cards, or ninja cards, I should just say, have just go again on them naturally. You don't have to mm. combo to give them go again, which I think is very, very yeah. nice. So I'm going to play this Descendant Gusway from my arsenal. I'm going to pitch this Visit the Floating Dojo to pay for it. Um, uh, so that is just going to be three go again because the combo is not enabled. I have two resources floating. Hmm. Uh, well, I have no blocks. Any reactions from you? Nope. No reactions. All right. No reactions from me as well. So I will take three down to 14 already. Sounds good. Let's follow that one up. Oh, yes. We're just going to play this Bonds of Ancestry from hand. Since we do have a Gust Wave card here on the uh, chain here, uh, we do have Combo Active, which says if a card with Gust Wave with, uh, in its name was the last attack this combat chain, which it was, this card costs two less to play and has go again mm -hmm. and also has when this attacks, I may banish a card with combo from my graveyard. If I do, search my deck for a card with the same name, banish it, and then shuffle. Um, you may play this combat chain. So, unfortunately for us, the only card that we have in our uh, graveyard with combo is with this Winds of Eternity, but I'm still going to do it. So we're going to banish this Winds of Eternity <laughs> to go grab a Winds of Eternity, yeah. and, uh, and then we can play it. Hey, look, it was a second card from the bottom. And go ahead and shuffle. And then uh, this is a four with go again now. Okay. So I'm going to respond to the resolution of that by playing Driftwood Quiver. I'm going to destroy it, and then I'm going to take the Arsenal card, mm. put it on the bottom of my deck. Okay, yeah. I am then going to... I smell some trap shenanigans going on here. Pass blocks. Oh. Any reactions? Uh, no, I would not like to react. Okay. Um, I will... Quite simply. Winds is an attack for two? Um, uh, Winds of Eternity is a two attack, yes. Okay. Um, I will block here with Inertia Trap, blocking for three. Um, the trigger effect actually does not go off because your attack is not greater than its base, yeah? Correct. Okay, so I will block three uh, and then have... Uh, no, I will, I will choose to load. 
with Riptide. Okay. And uh, have no further reactions. So okay. I'll take one here, down oh, to yeah. 13. Yep. I will pass reactions back. Yep. Yep. You got anything? Uh, yep. Yep. You'll take, just take the one. Yes. Alrighty. With the go again, I would like to use one of my floating resources to attack you with a harmonized Kadachi for one. Mm, no blocks. Any reactions? Nope. No reactions for me. Take one. And then you probably guessed it. Here's the other harmonized Kadachi with one go again. Take one. And then finally, the Winds of Eternity for two. Hmm, I will respond to that from the arsenal with Tripwire Trap for four. Oh, no. And that will ping you. That does. One. What is the effect on Tripwire Trap? Uh, it just says hit effects do not trigger this hit chain effect. link. Uh, unless you pay one. But there are no real hit effects outside of uh, taking a couple of cards from your graveyard that don't exist there currently. Yep, yep. All right, cool. So, yeah, I just go down to 19 there. Yep. Sounds good. Cool. Sounds like a plan. I'm going to clean up my turn. All right. My hands have been interesting. So, as you drop, I will start by cracking the old Blossom of Spring to gain a resource. Oh, nice. Because I'm going to need that resource. But first, I'm going to play Scout the Periphery Red and then trigger Riptide's effect. Playing a card from hand, going to drop a card into the arsenal. And then I'll take a look at the top of my deck. That's a card that exists, and I can't do anything about it. Uh, at that point, I will uh, then pay the resource that I have floating to send a death touch for nine. It's nine because it's getting a buff from the Scout the Periphery since it came from Arsenal. Yeah, nine is pretty good. Pretty and I get good. to pick what I want to give you. Hmm. Nine is pretty good. So, uh, any cards in hand? None. I'm face up. Okay. So I think this is a turn where you get a little bit of tempo back, but I think I want to preserve my life here because giving me, having the option to give me a frailty if you want makes certain turns very awkward. <laughs> very, very that awkward. That it does. That it, that it does. And so my hand is already a little awkward, so I think this is a turn where we just, we just chunk it in. So we're going to block with a Whelming Gust Wave for three, a Whelming Gust Wave for three, and then a Dishonor for three. We're going to block nine here. Cover it up. Yep. Sounds good. My turn is done. All right. I will draw my four and then I will pass. Cool. My turn is going to be a very simple turn. I'm just going to stab at the uh, harmonized Kadachi for one, pitching the only card in my hand, lunging press, floating two. Uh, I am going to pass to reactions. Do you have any reactions? I pass. All right, I'm going to Inertia Trap this one, too. Unfortunately, both of those landed on unfortunate non-buffs, so I don't get the trigger on it, but it does block for three, and it allows me to drop a card into my arsenal with Riptide, so yeah. I think I'm going to do that. Drop here. Cool. Covers yeah. it up. Cool, and then with the go again, I would like to attack you with my other Harmonized Kadachi using one of my resources. Sounds good. I will then let's see. I want that. Does your mask have a block on it? Um, yes, Mask of Many Faces has one block and blade break. Uh, I will take the one. No blocks, no reactions. Ooh, got there. One day, one damage. Let's go. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and pass the turn. All right, sounds good. Draw up. Okay, well, that is an interesting hand. Okay, I am going to simply play from Arsenal the card I loaded previously. I'm going to play Death Touch, floating a resource here. One card in hand, Death Touch coming for six, floating one. Okay. Okay, so Death Touch coming for six, floating one. If I wanted to do this turn, I could do that. You know what? I like being greedy. And you know what? We're here in the pits with outsiders. It's a, a place of greed and gambling. And I think I'm going okay. to do both. So I'm going to no block this. Sounds good. And I have no reactions. 
Cool, I also have no reaction. So I'm gonna take six and go to 13, and you okay. have an on-hit trigger. Yes, you may have a frailty token oh. so that your Kadachis are less impactful. Yes, very... <clears throat> the, the saddest token for, for ninjas. <laughs> All right, I arsenaled my final card, and I will draw up to four. Okay. So, let's see if we can get a turn out of this with no Kadachis. I think we can, but it will be interesting. So, yes. Okay, so I am going to activate my Mask of Many Faces. Just so Sounds many, good. Just so many faces. Uh, we're going to... How many? How many faces, Cal? Oh. It's got at least three in the art, possibly more if we see the backside. Um, I'm going to pitch this Dishonor to do that. Uh, we're going to float two here. And so the card that I'm going to name is actually 100 Wins. So okay. the next card I play has the name 100 Wins. So I would like to follow that up with this yellow surging strike using my two remaining resources so this surging strike which is also 100 wins is coming in for four with go again four with go again you have two cards left yes i do have two cards in my hand and both of your wins of eternity are banished uh one is in the graveyard the other one is banished oh that's right because you played it yes yes yeah. yes um, and let's see, have you played any 100 wins prior to this? I have no 100 wins in my okay. bin. Cool. This is coming for four, so... Yep. With that, I will go to reactions. Yes, I pass reaction. I will, from Arsenal, Tripwire Trap for four... And this will trigger and deal you a damage. Thanks to Riptide's effect. Yep, I go to 12 from that. What is the effect on Tripwire Trap again? <laughs> and hit effects will not trigger this chain link hit unless effect. you pay one. Okay, I do not pay the one. Sounds good. All right, that covers up four. You take one like you did, yeah. and uh, we continue. Yeah, I would like to attack with... You probably guessed it. This I'm going to guess... This, this oh, a, it was 100 wins. This is a 100 wins. And so this is very important. I'll read out 100 wins. For those who don't know, uh, you'll see it on the screen here too, but uh, combo, if 100 wins was the last attack this combat chain, this attack gains plus one for each other card named 100 wins I control on the combat chain. So we have one other card uh, called 100 wins. So this gets plus one. This is a red, so it's coming in for four with go again. Yes, yes. I will um, declare no blocks. Do you have any reactions? I pass reactions. I will, from the hand, play Tar Pit Trap. This All will trigger times. because it's defending an attack with Go Again. Uh, and it says the next time an attack action card hits this turn, effects don't trigger. Hmm. Okay, interesting. So this will deal you one damage from Riptide's effect. Yeah, so I'll take the one. I'll go to 11 here. Now, this will only cover three of your four, though. So this currently has me sitting at taking one. Okay. Unless you want to react with anything. I do not. You can take the one. All right, I'm at nine. And I'm just going to attack you with the other 100 wins in my hand. And so this one's a blue one. It's coming in for one, plus two from the two other 100 wins on the combat chain. So it's just coming in for three with go again. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Three with go again. Three with go again. And 100 wins snowballs per 100 wins on the combat chain? Is that what it is? Yes, it gets plus one for each other card named 100 wins on the combat chain. So gotcha. Okay. Kind of two previous. But I have no cards in hand. Um, right. And uh, no resources floating. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, we will say no blocks. Okay. I pass. Any reactions? Pass reactions. All right. I will take three. Excellent. Excellent. Down to six. All right. That's going to be my turn. Let's clean it on up. Get this this stinky frailty <laughs> get out of here. Get out of here. I don't know. You can keep it. It's, it's, a, it's a gift. It's a parting gift. I, I want it. I don't want it. Okay. 
So we are going to kick things off with the good old fashioned uh, yellow captain's call from the hand. And I will choose to load with Riptide on this, dropping a card. Uh, we're going to choose the mode plus two here. From that point, we're then going to play the card that we loaded, which is Bolton Shot. So that's going to make Bolton Shot fire over at you for five uh, because it is a yellow. So uh, yellow Bolton Shot for five is going to gain go again. And if it hits, I get to reload this card perhaps from my hand. Yeah, Bolton Shot's a nice one. Let me take a look at my bin. Okay. All right, let me see. Five, uh, you have one card in hand? I do, a one card, yeah. No resources, though. Okay. Hmm. How much do I value the on hit? Not a ton, but... I also don't like taking too, too much damage. Hmm. Okay. So I think my turn is going to be something like... Yeah. Yeah. So I think we can get away with blocking with this one. I think we're going to block with this be like water for two and then go to reactions. Uh, no reactions to me. I'm also going to pass reactions. So I will okay. leak uh, three damage here, go down to mm -hmm. eight. And you I will one. choose to reload. Cool. Sounds good. And uh, then I will send over this ravenous rabble. Let's mm. see what it's for. I have a feeling there's a blue. We haven't seen too many blues yet. Oh, no. Okay, good. It's a yellow. Okay, okay. so this comes for three. All right. That's a nice little medium there. Okay, so you are at six. I am at eight. How do I feel about just even evening this up? I don't... I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Yeah, I think, oh man, it's a little, it is a little rough. All right, yeah, um, we're gonna no block this. I'm gonna say no blocks. Sounds good, take three. I go to five. I have no more things with which to do, and I will draw this card plus three more. Sounds good, sounds good. All right, let's start the turn by attacking with a blue surging strike for three. We're gonna pitch this blue 100 wins to pay for it. It's gonna float one. Uh, blue surging strike is coming in for three with go again. Hmm. One card left? I do have one card left in hand. I will uh, pass to the reactions. Uh, I have no reactions. All right. I will play tar pit trap, blocking three. It will trigger, so it will do you one. Oof. All right, go to four. And it will also force, uh, because your attack has go again, it will also force the next time an attack action card hits, your effects will not trigger. Okay. Okay, cool. So that should it, cover it up, that, unless you have any reactions. Yep, that does cover it up. It does cover it up. Um, okay, let's go to the next chain link. Um, I still think I want to do this. Let me take a look at what I got going on in here. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay. Is it worth one damage? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Um, we will Kadachi for one. With go again. Uh, no blocks. Uh, no reactions. I'll go to five. Cool. Okay. Now's the moment of truth. Everyone, audience, Mr. Armada here. My last card in my hand. You're going to see it either way. It is Visit the Floating Dojo, which is a, a cool little new Katsu specialization. And I have the option to pitch it to attack with my other Kadachi, or I can play it and do some stuff. And I think I want to just play it. So we're going to do that. I think we're going to do that. So I'm just going to play Visit the Floating Dojo. It's an instant. 
And mm -hmm. I get to put a Surging Strike and then another card with combo um, from my graveyard on the top and or bottom of my deck. And I do have um, a Surging Strike in my bin. Well, I did play one this turn, but I have a better one in my bin. Uh, I think it's just a yellow, yeah. So we're going to grab this yellow Surging Strike and then another card with combo. We could try to be cheeky with this Dishonor, but I really like the Gust Waves. So we have mm -hmm. Descendant Gust Wave and Whelming Gust Wave. I'm going to take Surging Strike and I think this Red Whelming Gust Wave. And That's scary. I think we're going to put those on the top of my deck. Both of them on the top. Uh, it doesn't really matter the order because I will be drawing them. And I'm just going to pass my turn. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. It's an interesting call. I can make an attack with another Kadachi, put him down to potentially... Um, closer to lethal, but I think setting up for a better turn is possibly the path to take. Possibly the path. Uh, it is your move. Okay. So I have some interesting choices myself. I think I'm just going to go about it this way. I am going to play Plunder Run here from hand, and I'm going to choose to load Okay, yeah. a card uh, face down. Uh, this will give my next, uh, the next time my attack action card uh, hits, I get to draw a card. I'm going to trigger the barbed castaway effect to um, turn a face down arrow face up, pitching this buzzsaw trap. So Ooh. there's a face down arrow face up. I've got two floating. And this will gain an aim counter. I am then going to fire that with one floating. This is coming for Five. So I will represent that like this with the old aim counter on it. So I have one up, uh, no cards in hand. If this hits, I get to give you a blood rot. If this hits, I also get to draw a card. Hmm. Yeah, this one is very interesting. So for me, I basically just have to block this out because... If I even take one, he gets to draw a card, and he can use the Snapdragon Scaler to give a go again, and then play the card that he drew. So this right. is like a must-block situation for me here. You have no cards in hand, right? None. I'm face up. Yeah. So this is a pretty good turn, because it basically means that I can't do my turn. Because I don't want to give him a card, and then also take a Blood Rot, and then also get hit with whatever he goes. So it's coming in for five. Oh man. Okay, so I I think I think I think we have to do it this way, which is which is kind of funny. Um, oh, but I really want I really want the card too. Mm. I'm at four though. Tough decisions. Okay, so if I block this, what does my turn look like? My turn looks like pitching, attacking, attacking. It's not bad. And you're at five. That's not bad. Okay. All right. We're going to block with that Whelming Gust Wave that I put on top, plus Breaking Scales, plus Breeze Rider Boots for a yep. total of five here. I figured that's what would happen. Yeah. It is covered up. I very much wanted to play that uh, <laughs> that, that Gust Wave, but you got to do what you got to do. I very much, on your turn, considered dropping that plunder run into Arsenal, but I uh, the only way I would be able to play out anything was uh, to get rid of it. To the only way to stop anything you had was to uh, play that buzzsaw trap, and then I couldn't mm. pay for anything. So that makes sense. I made the hedge that you were going to attack, and then you did not attack. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, over to you. This is a. Uh, it's just a. It, well, I'll just show it out. So we're going to play that Surging Strike that uh, you saw me put on top of the deck. We're going to pitch this Bonds of An Ancestry that I very much would have loved to uh, to play, but we're not going to be able to play it yeah. this turn. So uh, this is going to be four with go again. Okay, one card? One card in hand. All right. I think I'm going to give you... Uh, yeah, I'm going to give you one here. Okay. And then move to Reaction. I no reacts. I'm gonna play Frailty Trap. Because your attack has go again, this covers three, it triggers, and it's going to uh, give you a frailty token. Oof. I think more importantly, it takes me down to three, which is very, very scary. I do have a frailty token, so 
Note to self, no Kadachis this turn. No Kadachis. All right. And then I should uh, note that I am going to trigger uh, Riptide's effect. So before all of that resolves, apologies. I wanted to explain what happened, but no worries, no worries. I should trigger his effect first. And then I am going to drop in. We're just going to actually drop. We could drop either. No, nope, we're just going to do this. Drop that in. Cool. Two cards. And so that covered that up. No damage was dealt. But luckily, I did draw into another Gust Wave. Just a different Gust Wave. We're going to attack with a Red Descendant Gust Wave. And since Surging Strike was the last attack this combat chain, it costs less to play and also gets plus two. So this is actually five with go again. Five is pretty meaty. Especially pretty when you're at five. Indeed. No cards in hand, though, yeah? Nope, no cards in hand. I have one resource floating, but the frailty basically makes it so I can't attack with my Kadachi, so you don't really have to worry about following up with Kadachi. Um, I technically have Breaking Scales available as well. Um, and then Breeze Rider Boots doesn't really matter that much. I kind of want to live greedily. I kind of want to do it. I want to live super greedily. I'm not going to say, well, I don't need to say. I was going to say, I'm not going to say what I would do, but I think you know what I would do. I would take the greedy play. I will also like to note that it doesn't always work out work out for me. I'm going to I'm gonna do it. Like, we're just having a good time. We're going to play greedy. Yeah. I'm going to block one okay. to your five. Because you, uh, you don't have any cards in hand, right? Okay, well, okay. Well, oh, this does have combo, right? Yeah, I was going to say, I, I would okay. like to know. So then I am going to block more than one. Yeah, yeah. Fine. As I do see, you do have the uh, yep. breaking scales over there. Uh, so, and do I want to just give you that? Maybe I just give you this instead. Yeah, I mean, that it always takes that. That's fair. Yes, we will uh, We will give you the, the old three for here. Okay, now. Blocking three with Searing Shot Red. Now do I want to activate Breaking Scales? You're blocking three, so it's going to leak two. Technically put you down to... Put you down to three. Three or two, it's your choice. Hmm. I... Hmm. I think I want to. Sounds good. Yeah, I think I want to. See, I, I'm going to activate the Breaking Scales to give it plus one. Sounds good. All right, I will take three damage from your six. I will go to two. And the reason why is just it makes it makes taking one Kadachi really scary and put putting you down to one is just very, very uncomfortable. Alright. I'm gonna drop and pass to you and get rid of that get rid of the, the frailty again. Katsu does not like being frail. Alright, from the arsenal I have a very simple play. It's remorseless. Or five. Floating a resource. That's a good one. It's a good one. Hmm. Or five, you say. If it hits you, then you take a point every time you play an action card. <laughs> Basically, if it hits me, I die. I think I'm at yes, three. I'm that at is three. The, yeah. That's the beauty of uh, the wonderful remorseless. It's why we pay the big bucks for that card. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I think I have a plan of attack here. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I guess. Uh, I'm going to block for five. Wait, wait, do you have any cards in your hand? None. I'm okay. up. Okay. I'm going to block for five here. I'm going to block with a Descendant Gust Wave and a Whelming Gust Wave. Look at that. Double Gust Wave. For five. Sounds good. Blocked it out. Block it out. Just give it a little blockeroo. I will draw my four. Pass on over to you with your two card hand. Yep, two cards. Dos. Sounds good. Cart. Um. Yeah, I mean, we're just gonna. Oh, interesting. I don't think it matters the order, to be honest. So we're going to Kadachi for one pitching this bee like water floating to here. Okay. Uh, I will say no blocks. Any reactions? 
Uh, nope, no reaction. Uh, collapsing trap shows up. No! This attack does have go again, so it will trigger its uh, effect on you. You will take one point of damage. And you're going to discard your hand and draw back up to your hand size minus one. Hmm. Uh, let me do the math here. What's one minus one? Um, much, much less than I would like. Okay, so can I do anything here? I think the answer is no. The answer is no. I should have... So this is where sequencing does matter. I should have <laughs> attacked with this first. Oh, collapsing trap. You, you've you got me. Okay, so um, that is going to trigger. I will take one damage. I go down to two. This is from Riptide's ability, which is very, very mm -hmm. sad. Um, and I'm going to... Oh, I'm going to... Wait, wait, wait. Before we go, I'm going to load. Sorry, I was so excited. Yeah. I am going to load with Riptide's effect, and we're going to drop a card oh, down there. Oh, yeah, it's All rough. Right. It's real rough. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to discard my hand, which is sad. It's not a spectacular card. It's just it's just coming in. It'll, it would come in for two, but two is lethal at this point. So I will discard this yellow Descendant Gust Wave uh, and then be very sad and draw my... Oh, wait. Hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> ah, that card is that card is real good. It's real good. All right. Well, um, attack with my other Kadachi for one. Okay. So then I have to decide if I want to do anything about that one. I think I value myself staying alive at two enough to maybe give you toxic tips. I think that seems fine. We're going to we're going to try to stay at two as long as possible. So there's the uh, toxic tips block. That is fair. Oh, man. Oh, man. When taking into consideration at your local skirmish season, Riptide always <laughs> has the collapsing trap. Collapse. Uh, I got collapsed. <laughs> yeah, total. I was I was one of those dudes on that bridge. All right. It is. Okay. It is your go. Is indeed. Um, I have a two card hand and I have this arsenal. Um, so I figure I might as well play the arsenal. Seems. Uh, and the arsenal is remorseless. It is indeed remorseless. Now I have to pitch for this, but I have to make sure I pitch the right card here, which is kind of interesting. Hmm. So I'm going to just do some double check math. I'm going to drop this one and oh, sorry, I'm going to pitch. That's what I mean to say. I'm going to pitch the uh, hemorrhage bore here for the remorseless. So this comes for five does not have go again. I do have snaps up, though. Yes, you do. Snaps up, card in hand. Nothing, no resources, though. Nothing floating, but still, I mean, it could easily be like a rabble or something like that. Hmm. Okay. Well, I think... Oh, I hope I don't die from this. This is the, the, the another aspect of being greedy. I'm going to block three. Does Ranger have a zero cost plus pump? Oh, there's Rain Razors. If it's Rain Razors, then I'm probably dead. Uh, so we're going to block three with Bonds and another two with 100 wins. And I think I'm going to try to keep this. <laughs> Maybe. So I'm going to block for five. That is my block. Do you have any reactions? Do I die? Um, no reactions. Oh, let's go. Not dead. I, I, I don't have any reactions. Okay. Okay. Done. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, cool. Whoo. <laughs> Whoo. Okay. So, I'm going to keep my two-card hand. Um, all right. I would like to Kodachi you for one. Pitching this blue be like water floating two. That is a thing you're doing? Yes. The thing I am doing is moving to reactions. No, no. Okay, yep. Frailty trap. Oh no, okay. Your attack has to go again. This blocks three, it triggers. Puts I you go, to one. I go to one. I get the frailty as well, but I, I you do. I would much rather have uh, the frailty than being at one. <laughs> being at one. Yeah. Alright, well. I I pass reactions on that one. Done. Okay. Um now I'm gonna play a card from hand, and hopefully you don't have another trap to kill me. <laughs> Welcome to Kadachi Lock. <laughs> Here we 
we go. Yeah, the tra trap lock. It's not even a trap lock. It's just it's just like reckless swing or steel blade shunt. I'm just like... Yep, that's what it is. All right. It, the, the card in my hand's not bad. So I'm going to pay the the rare full cost bonds of mm -hmm. ancestry. Um, and it's just going to come in for four. Doesn't have go again. Doesn't have an on, on attack because uh, we don't have the combo active. Four but is it, still really good, though. But it's four. Yeah, four is not bad. Uh, I am going to, weirdly enough, I'm going to block for three. Okay, yeah. Take one. All right, yeah. One all. Let's go. The The saddest part here is the frailty. I know I said I wasn't too <laughs> sad about the frailty, but if it wasn't for the frailty, I could I could have vest and then attack with my other Yes, you could have. Yeah. But alas. But alas. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and clean up my turn and pass on over to you. And, you know, fingers crossed, fingers crossed, I'm not dead. All right. Uh, start of my turn, I'm going to play the Arsenal card, which is a Falcon Wing for three with go again. Falcon Wing. Okay, so Falcon Wing, three, go again. I, looking at my hand, I mean, I'm at one. I definitely have to block, so I don't die. So we'll block three with a Whelming Gust Wave. Sounds good. Um, I am then going to follow that up by breaking the chain and playing Scout the Periphery. And I'm going to load uh, into my Arsenal, the final card in my hand. Uh, this allows me to look at the top of my deck and it gives my next Arsenal card plus two. Plus two, you uh, And then I'm going to throw a drill shot at you for six. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Well, I'm not dead but i'm also not gonna have a turn so <laughs> i was hoping that you had some twos in there uh yep well it turns out the rest of my hand is two <laughs> so we got two four six i was really crossing my fingers i'm like can, can i get away of playing this red surging nope not, not gonna happen so i'm just gonna block that on out all right sounds good and uh yep I, i'm just gonna you know uh take my turn let me let me let me um Consider my options, and I'm just going to draw and pass back over to you. It is your go. I understand. I understand. It is your go. Okay. You know what? Okay. We can live with some of this stuff. We'll see. We'll see if we get to keep any of it. Not the worst. Okay. I'm going to start my turn with um, Scout the Periphery. Uh, okay. This is a card that's going to allow me to load, and I'm going to do that. I think that's the right call, and it's going to allow me to look at the top of my deck. And that isn't affecting this turn, but it is making me think about how I want to play out the future turns. Future turns, you say? <laughs> yeah. This will also grant a plus three buff, by the way. Oh, okay. Future turns, you say? <laughs> Hmm. I don't know. I feel like Gusto is more fun than be the measured approach. What do you think? I do like no small degree of Gusto. Okay, well, I think we're just going to Gusto it then. Uh, we're going to play Scout the Periphery Yellow. <laughs> okay, yeah. For plus two. Would you like to take a look at the top card of your deck? I would like to look at the top card of your deck. Oh, okay. So, because I can do that. So what I'm going to do... So I don't, I don't get a look at this, so I'm just going to kind of look away, <laughs> and I'm just going to flip it on over, and you can tell me if you can see that. Deal. You can put it back. Okay. And then... Then... I'm going to play uh, Captain's Call, yellow, <laughs> and <laughs> choose the mode plus two. Uh, Steven, Azalea was last week. Choose the mode plus two on this one, not the go again. Because then I'm going to play from Arsenal Falcon Wing, which has go again already. So <laughs> this we'll is just bring all the dice over. A chunky Falcon Wing. <laughs> this is the biggest Falcon Wing I've ever seen. Just Falcon. a casual oh. 10. 10, you say? 10, you say? Casual 10. Hold on, let me do some math. Oh. All right, well, we're going to block three... Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. My whole hand. There you go. He does it again. 
Yep. You we did it again. What we got there. It was, a, it was a really nice one, too. Look at that. E-Strike and Empowerment. Goodbye. Yep. <laughs> Goodbye. All right. Ooh, I get to see I get to see the card now. Let's see what let's see what it is. Ooh, another ancestral empowerment. Look at that. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Well, I'm just going to draw these There's cards. There's the one. I'm just going to draw these cards and I'm just going to pass it back over to you. All right. Sounds good. Stare longingly at my at my kadachis. Well, we are going to begin with the good old-fashioned ravenous rabble. Revealing the top card of my very diminutive blue, deck. Blue, oh blue. no, yes. we finally get to the buzzsaw trap. Yes. This is only attacking for two. Uh, I needed that. <laughs> I needed that. <laughs> I'm going to block for two with this. Uh, oh, wait, wait. I do have to do a load here. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I was so sad by the uh, reveal there. I'm very happy. I'm very happy. This maybe right. gives me a chance to not die this turn. We'll see. I'm probably <laughs> going to be dead here. I'm going to block for two with this blue surging strike. You did the block. You blocked it successfully. Yes. Yes. Uh, I am then going to follow this up by using Barbed Castaway here Ooh, um, to oh, no. turn an arrow face up. Mm -hmm. It's going to be Withering Shot. So I'm going to pitch here Bolton Shot, this yellow, floating a resource. So this is going to give an aim counter to Withering Shot. And then I'm going to fire Withering Shot for six. Okay. Okay. Well, so I can't help but notice that my life is one. Um, and I can't help but notice that one of the cards in my hand is this Visit the Floating Dojo. So I'm not going to visit... Well, I could visit the Floating Dojo. This is an instant, so I could use this this turn as an instant. But um, instead, we'll just cut to the chase here and not actually play cut to the chase. That's, that's a different card. That's an assassin that's card. card. No, I'm going to block with this Ancestral Empowerment that you know about. And this 100 wins that blocks for two. Um, and then I'm going to play. No, I'm just going to die. I'm not going to play. I'll just, yeah. I'll just be yeah. dead. Just be dead. So, yeah, yeah you, got, you got me. You got we me. We got there eventually. Oh, that, we did. The aim get counter there. did it. The aim counter got you that extra plus one. To, well, to... actually, I think the aim counter is the wrong play. I think I messed up there because if I push this for five and float one, then I can use the other once per turn instant to put. A searing shot, which is four extra damage. Oh, you could so. scale. Yeah, you could. You I just, snap yeah, I right. just miscounted my resources. So I got lucky that uh, you didn't have the block there. Yeah, you got there anyway. I was like, oh, if I, can, <laughs> if I can keep the dojo, then I can actually attack with my kadachis. Look at that. All right. Well, well I was down good. to four cards, though. That was pretty close. I was getting there. I wasn't at four. Let's see what we have. Six. It was, it was close. It was, it, was, it was close. Well, Great game. Those traps did a uh, number on me. I definitely, I definitely fell into the trap more than a couple times, and uh, and the frailty, the frailty is real nasty too. Mm -hmm. Tra yeah. Traps and frailty. Well, that is our first game. Stay tuned for the second game when we play with more or less these same decks, but upgraded with no budget. So, stay tuned for that. All right, and now that you've watched the budget gameplay, let's go over the no-budget version of my Katsu deck. It's it's a really interesting one. I didn't make a ton of changes, to be completely honest, so let's talk about it. And here is our no-budget version of Katsu. As you can see, it looks very similar to our budget version. In fact, we're only changing in one main deck card. We are swapping out the Lunging Press for Concealed Blade. Why? Because Concealed Blade is almost a strict upgrade. They basically do the same thing, except Concealed Blade also blocks for three. It notably does not pump our E-Strike, but that's fine. That's fine. Uh, the Lunging Press can pump anything, but it blocks for two, and I like having a critical mass of three block blocks, especially since we have some cards that don't block at all, and a lot of our other ninja cards just randomly block for two. So getting more three blocks is great. And then the, the biggest change is our equipment suite. So we're still running the Breeze Rider Boots, still pretty good. And then we're running a bunch of legendaries. Now, the two key ones here, well, really the, the, the biggest one here is Mask of Momentum. Mask of Momentum is incredible and changes how you play the game and changes how your opponent plays the game. You, they kind of have to block around Mask of Momentum because they really don't want to give you that card draw. If you're going to pick one big card to upgrade this deck, I would pick Mask of Momentum. It is an absolutely key card for high-level ninja strategies. Though, that is not to say that the Mask of Many Faces isn't good, because like I said, I found myself 
really missing this card in certain situations where I was like, oh, I wish I had the Mask of Many Faces so I could do a better combo here. So, once again, if you don't have the budget for it, I think Mask of Many Faces is good, but if you got it, uh, give the Mask of Momentum a shot. Uh, Shuko is an interesting one. I, I think it's a legit option between the Tiger Stripe Shuko and the Breaking Scales, but for this particular version, I really like the Shuko. We actually have a bunch of attacks that attack for two, that have a two base attack. We have our Be Like Waters, we have 100 Winds, and even some of our uh, Gust Waves and whatever um, have a base two attack. So we can actually get this plus one from the Shuko pretty well, and it also blocks for two if you really have to. So I do like the Shuko. And then finally, we have Fyandel's Spring Tunic. Now, this card isn't as great in this deck as it is in a lot of other decks. We can use that extra resource to help pay for like something like Surging Strike, or if we don't have combo to pay for something like Descendant Gust Wave or Bonds of Ancestry, but most of the cards in our deck cost zero. So getting the extra resource here isn't as important as other things. Now let's take a look at DM Armada's list and see what traps he has in store. All right, on to the no budget list. And one of the most exciting things about playing as Riptide is that Riptide can be built a lot of different ways. And so this is uh, one possible avenue that you can build Riptide into a little bit more aggressive, more go wide friendly version. We are running Death Dealer instead of a uh, Barbed Castaway simply because it does give us a card draw when we load an arrow. Uh, we have Snapdragon Scalers again. We've got Crown of Providence, which is a fantastic card in my opinion for Riptide because it allows him on a weird or awkward turn to just fix his arsenal. Bullseye Bracers because we can use the uh, drop in for plus one on our Bolton shots over here. And then Blossom of Spring is a fantastic little option to just have the resource available whenever we need it. Uh, Spring Tunic is good, but uh, Blossom of Springs oftentimes can just do the same thing on a turn that we need it. And this deck isn't really looking to play a super duper long game. As you can see, we have uh, seven traps over here. We've got two Tripwire and one Pitfall. Those are the old crew traps. Uh, two Frailty traps, just because I really like the guaranteed trigger off of this and uh, against a lot of decks, that uh, that Frailty token can actually help a lot. And then, of course, Collapsing Trap and Buzzsaw Trap. Those are fantastic cards. This entire row are our non-attacks. We've got uh, one Nimbleism, uh, one Captain's Call, notably. We have four Plunder Runs. I'm choosing to run a Red Scout the Periphery. I just like the plus three on it, along with the plus three on Nimbleism, which technically Nimbleism can fall on our uh, four copies of Total De Death Touch and Ravenous Rabble because both are uh, not arrows, so they can't receive any arrow buffs. Captain's Call can also fall on both of those as well. We are only running one Codex of Frailty and only one Codex of Blood Rot. Uh, if you like Codex of Frailty, then go two of them. It's a really good card. Uh, if you like Codex of Blood Rot, because uh, in this deck it actually works quite well, uh, then do that as well. It's up to you. You could try cutting for those. Um, honestly, you could take this Plague Hive out. I just have it for the memes. It's sometimes just really good to pitch into and get like a, a beneficial uh, status token. But if you want to cut that and throw in another Codex, help yourself. Sigil's always really good in Blitz, and particularly in uh, this deck because Riptide allows you to load off of it. Uh, these are all of our one costs, and these are all of our zero costs. Notables here are the four Bolton shots that really makes the deck kind of purr and hum and sing and make your opponent sad. Uh, Bullseye Bracers with that, as we mentioned, is just very good for uh, extending a turn. Uh, the deck's just really good at uh, presenting awkward amounts of damage at the wrong time for your opponent and then uh, punishing them occasionally with these traps. And so we're going to take this upgraded list into Kel's Katsu. Oh, All right, shall we roll to see who goes first on this uh, this upgraded game? Yes, let's do it. Roll, roll, roll All the right. Christies. Would you like odd or even? I would like odd, please. All right. Let's see it is... Can... Even. Nope. Just not. I'm just. Nope. No, it's not happening. It's not happening. What would you like to? What would you like to do? You know what? I'm gonna give it a whirl. I'm gonna go first. Why not? Let's give it a shot. Ooh. Let's let's do it. See what let's happens. It. I'm usually addicted to tempo, but I figure in the uh, spirit of testing, you might as well give the first a try. Yeah, might as well. And also, you know what? You could end up with a nice little card in your arsenal to save for later. It's not. That's not true. nothing. Not that is true. That is very, very true. Uh, I'm going to start by playing... I wish I would have chosen going second. 
What was I, what was I thinking? Uh, Seconds always better. Hindsight. Nimbleism. Yep. And I am going to... Drop this card into the arsenal via Riptide's effect. Nice. I am then going to play that card, and that card turns out to be a Bolton shot. So uh, it will be four, but then it will get three from nice. its own effect, or from the, excuse me, the effect of Nimbleism, which means it does have go again, and it does have the uh, reload effect as well. Goal seven, Bolton shot. Not uh, bad. Well, match a three, four, five, six, seven. Sounds good. Um, and then I will just move to the old arsenal. Arsenaling this card. Sweet. And passing it on over to you. Sounds good. I got to keep one card. Look at that. And I will yeah. drop when you do. All right. Over to you. All righty. I will not forget my, <laughs> I will not forget the tunic. Tunic two. One, and then let's take a look at my hand. Immediately regret blocking with certain cards. <laughs> no, I'm Isn't kidding. that always how it goes? I'm, I'm sort of kidding. Um, okay. All right, let me think how we want to do this. I think... I think we just go for the big... I just think we just go for the big numbers here. Um, because we didn't, we didn't get a lot of, like... Well, you'll see. You'll see. All I would like to... Certainly... I will see. <laughs> Surging strike you for five. Pitching this yellow be like water. All right. I'm going to... And you have a, a two-card hand, right? I do have two. I will uh, say no blocks. Do you have any reactions? Uh, No reactions from me. Okay. Uh, neither do I. I will take five, is oh, it? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's five. It's a red. Okay. Okay. We're on the board. Okay. I would like to then... I really wish I had a nice combo to, to follow this up with, but I don't. So, like I said, we're just going for numbers. I like to play Enlightened Strike, tucking my final card. And normally I like to choose the plus two for the, for the, the biggest possible numbers, but I think here we choose the draw card. So I would like to draw a mm -hmm. card from that. Draw a card seems good. Okay. Um, I will... See, hmm. I'm just playing. Uh, Welcome to Wraith Constructed here. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> seems like it. That's pretty solid. <laughs> seems pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and block three. Uh, I kind of want to be greedy and throw this Crown of Providence. <laughs> in. I really kind of do, but I think I'm just gonna save it for later. I'll block okay. three here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. Um, I have no reaction. All right, I'll take two. Okay. Down to 12. I would like to... Hmm. Interesting choice. I think I am going to arsenal this. Okay. And uh, All right. pass on over to you. Okay. So, at the start of my turn, I'm going to play my arsenal card, which is a red plunder run. Ooh, so it's okay. going to give a really wonderful on-hit draw card effect, but also give plus three to my next attack. Yeah, that's pretty good. I am then going to... I think this is the right choice here. An interesting choice, too, because it could really go a couple of different ways. So I think I'm going to try to play around it in a different way. I'm going to go ahead and crack the Blossom of Spring to gain a resource. Ooh, okay. And then I'm going to spend that resource on Death Dealer. Okay, yeah. Um, so that I can load in a remorseless face up and draw a card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that does some interesting stuff, but does it do what I want? I don't know, but I am going to fire this remorseless at you, and it is going to be coming for eight. And if it hits, I draw a card. And if it hits um, all of your stuff next turn, that are action cards that you play will do you one damage. I have three cards in hand. Yeah, that's a little scary, but also I don't want to take the <laughs> Remorseless. It's one of the worst hot cards you can get hit uh, as a ninja. Get hit by mm -hmm. as a ninja, I should say. So I'm going to block for eight here. I'm going to block three Ancestral Empowerment, three Whelming Gust Wave, two Surging Strike for a total of eight. Okay. 
Um, let's see. As far as reactions are concerned, my options here are basically to Snapdragon Scalers with yep. the goal of pushing damage on your one card and one arsenal hand. Yep. I do I do have one card and one card in arsenal. It's interesting because it provides some amount of value, but not a ton. So I'm not going to do it. I'm going to go ahead and pass here. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. And I'm going to arsenal this. Yeah, let's go ahead and clean up, and then I will decide on the arsenal here. Yeah. That will all go away. And then we're going to arsenal. We're going to arsenal this card. That seems good. Okay. No, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, this one. Okay. This is the one we are. <laughs> All right. It's an interesting choice. There's some interesting decisions there. All right, over to you. Okay, Tunic to two. My turn's going to be very simple here. We would like to Kadachi for one, pitching the Visit the Floating Dojo that I had in my hand. Turns out I couldn't block if you tried to attack me, so. <laughs> I figured it would be a guaranteed hit, but. Uh... Yeah. The one damage here, that's uh, that's something. I mean, who knows? I could have thrown in all of my all of my equipment. I, can um, I will choose block. to not block. Do you have any reactions? No, no reactions. I'll take one. Cool. 16. Kadachi for one. Floating one. Uh, no blocks. Any reactions? Nah, no reactions. Okay. I'll take one. Okay, now this is actually a little interesting. If I want to save this card for a turn where the combo matters, or just force a card out of Steven's hand, because uh, Mask of Momentum is online now. So if this hits, it... it okay, I'm just going to do it. I'll, I'll explain why as we do it. This is a blue 100 win. So it's only coming in for one, and it always feels really bad blocking one. Um, but if he lets it hit, I, hit, I get a draw card. So... Sure. Yeah. Let's do it. Uh, I'm going to block with the Crown of Providence here, yeah, actually. that's fair. And I am going to use its effect. I'm, I think I'm going to bottom this card from my hand and draw a card. Okay. All cool. right. Um, yeah, that's going to do that for me. I'm going to pass. Sounds good. Got to get that. Pop the mask. Got to get that, cr uh, that crown out of there at some point. And it's true. Uh, draw, pass to you. All right. So I am going to start with Scout the Periphery. Um, and this is going to provide a plus two buff if a card comes from my arsenal. Uh, I'm going to check the top of my own deck. Okay. And then I'm going to play from arsenal a Death Touch, pitching a Plague Hive. It's a very spicy Ooh. turn. Oh, I love it. So. I will float one, and uh, we're going to go ahead and randomize this. So uh, we will put, we'll just roll a six-sided die here, and we're going to put uh, Blood Rot on one and six, since they're on opposite sides. We will put uh, Frailty on two and on five, mm -hmm. and then we will put Inertia on three and on four. Let's see what we get. Okay, let's do it. Let's see what we give you, I should say. Looks like you are getting... An inertia token. Inertia token. There we go. All right. So this is coming for eight. Death touch for eight. I have two cards in hand. I do have snaps up. I have one resource loading. Gross. All right. Very gross, actually. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. Next turn, tunic goes to three. All right, what's the worst case scenario? What do you give me? I already have an inertia. Worst case is that you give another me inertia. Second inertia. There it is. You have to get rid of your arsenal twice. Ha <laughs> um, Frailty is real bad. Pox. I'm at 20. Probably not going to choose the pox. Probably frailty. Um, and like you said, you still have two cards in hand. Yeah. I do. I have two cards, yeah. Now, do you... Okay, so I'm going to block for at least six here uh, okay. with a Concealed Blade and a uh, Dishonor. Now, the real question okay. is whether or not I want to throw in my Shuko as well. 
And what I'm debating in is basically, is, if he follows up, are the cards in his hand going to have a worse on-hit effect than uh, Death Touch? And the mm -hmm. answer is probably not, to be honest. So I think... I mean, even if it's remorseless, I'm only going to have a two-card hand if I just eat it all. So it's not even not going to do that much. Yeah, I'm going to block eight. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna um, two, cards in hand. two cards in hand, huh? You can do a lot with a two-card hand. <laughs> I do, do a have, lot of damage. I do have these nice little daggers that go, ha, ha, ha. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am going to react to this okay, with yeah. a Sigil of Solace. Ooh, okay. Gain three. Yeah. And then I'm going to drop this card into the arsenal with Riptide. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And then I'm going to choose if I want to react again yeah, yeah, with my true. Snapdragon Scalers. Yeah, that's true. Yep. So, yeah. Um, yeah, when it comes back to me, I pass, I pass uh, reactions. Right. I think I'm gonna just stand pat there. I think uh, we're gonna try to try to keep our value as long as possible with our with our stuff. That All right, is over to you. All right, tunic two three. Uh, this is just gonna be a very simple turn, and the inertia has chosen the modes for me. I'd just like to e-strike you for seven. <laughs> okay. I will not be drawing a card. <laughs> That, that does not seem like a good choice in this situation. Not not the play, huh? Yeah, nope. Got both of the E strikes, huh? Yeah. Let's see. This one's a this one's a German one. Ooh. Er Erluschetter Schlag. Shout out to any uh, Germans watching this video. I also apologize. <laughs> apologize for the, <laughs> pronouncing that. <laughs> Shout out and also apologies. All right, I am going to pass to reactions, and I am going to react with a frailty trap. Yeah. This will not trigger because your attack does not have go again. Yep. Um, but it is going to block three, so that leaves me taking four. Cool. Sounds good. Down to nine. Uh, cool. Measly, I'm... measly nine. I'm just going to pass uh, on over to you. Sounds good. Uh, get this inertia out of here, and... Yeah. The inertia was surprisingly not nothing with with me with a two card hand. I was like, does prevent me from having an arsenal, which is something that mm -hmm. I would have liked. Uh, from the arsenal, I'm gonna play infecting shot, pitching a yellow plunder run hmm. or five, floating one. Hmm. Okay, how many cards comes for five and the possible blood rot here? Okay, so you have five. You have snaps. Mm hmm. All right, let's see. We're at 20. We can leverage a little bit here if we want to try something. How badly do we want to try something? <laughs> hmm. It's a little sketch. Not going to lie. Little sketch. Okay, I think we are going to pass on blocks, go to reactions. Okay, I will react to snap this and give it go again. Cool. Yeah. Um, I will pass on reactions as well. All right. So it has go again. You take five and gain a yes. blood. I go to 15. Get my favorite token. Lovely, lovely blood rot. Not my favorite to have, but, you know, favorite to give. I'm going to use death dealer here and I'm going to load in face up a searing shot. Oh, yeah. Classic. Uh, that's going to draw me a card here. And I am then going to fire a Searing Shot for four. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Now, this is where it gets a little more interesting. Now do I block? Oh, man. If I get got from Collapsing Trap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that card's so nasty. I'm like, just looking at my hand and I'm like, well, if he has Collapsing Trap, this sucks. <laughs> really, Post-traumatic really. stress disorder triggering. Yeah. 
Oh, it, it, it real sucks. Hmm. And if I take that, I will take a good old five, go to ten. Yes. Plus the blood rot. Unless I pay for that, it takes me to a virtual eight. Yeah. You know, evens it up a little bit. This is how I, would I think so. Yeah. This is how. This is what I say to myself to justify the justify the, the greed place. Yep. Justify the greed that's going on in my head. I've been like, I've been so tempered so far, so measured, and I'm, now I'm just like, that ah, cast it all to the side. <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, I can. I could do stuff. Um, <laughs> we're going to do it. Yep, no locks. Go to reactions. Any reaction? No reactions from me. Take your five. Oh, One take... from the effect, which is yep. kind of fun. Yep, take four, and then the, the good old burn effect there. All right, I'm going to arsenal this card. Okay. And then I'm going to tuck this on the bottom, of course. That goes first, and then draw up. Okay. All right, let's see. We are going to start with, um, yeah, we'll go we'll Kadachi for one pitching this uh, Whelming Gust Wave. So it's going to float two, Kadachi for one. Okay. Um, no blocks. Any reactions? Cool. Uh, no reaction. No reactions here either. I'll take one. Sweet. Alrighty, let's follow that up with. All right, I think this is what we do. I think this is what we do. I would like to attack with B like water for two. On hit, okay. I can pay a resource, and then my next attack becomes the name that I say. <laughs> the name that he says. The name that I say. Well, specifically, Head Jab, Surging Strike, or Twin Twisters, yes. How many resources do you have right now? I have two floating. Two cards in hand. And okay. a tunic. Two floating. And, and, and a tunic. So I have, I have quite a lot of resources available. Gotcha. There's a good rule of thumb with this card. Just never let it hit and you don't have to worry. But I'm it's, thinking, it's a thinking I might card. let it hit. I don't it's know. This, it's I this think... funny little thing where it's just like, it's 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 two damage, and it's like, do you want to give up a card, or does it matter? Like, it's it's oh, I like it. I like it. It's kind of like a nice little mind game card. Mm-hmm. Whereas like normally, like just a two attack is like, whatever. It's two. You know what? Let's live dangerously. I'm gonna take it. Okay. Yeah. No okay. blocks. Any reactions? Uh no. Uh no reactions for me. When the be like water hits, I will pay the one. Um, using my floating resource, and we're going to choose a uh, surging strike. So, okay. be like water is now a surging strike, and also be like right. water. It can be two things. Um, and then I would like to follow that up with the classic whelming gust wave for okay. um, combo is an effect, so it's going to be four with go again and on hit draw card. So it gains a buff. Is that right? It, it does gain a buff, yeah. Yes. Why do oh. you ask? Why do you ask? Oh, I I just curious. It gained a buff. That seems interesting. Yeah. Huh. Um. Would, wouldn't that be? Wouldn't that be a thing? Yes. Actually, uh, no it, blocks. It, I was gonna say it technically has a, a two draw triggers because it has its own draw trigger and then mask of momentum because both of these cards hit. That's right. That's right. So just just putting that out there. Just putting. That. Okay. Yeah. So, no. Um, no. No blocks. No blocks. I, reactions? I, no, I, I I pass. I pass reactions. I'm gonna go ahead and play a buzzsaw trap here. Oh, okay. Remind buzzsaw trap the... um is is going to say this: when this defends an attack with attack greater than its base, the mm -hmm. attack can't gain attack this turn, so it's going to drop back down to its base attack, and this will block for three, and that will also ping you for a damage because it did trigger. Oh yes, that is true. Okay, so I go down to nine from that. And this is one of those situations where I very, very, very much wish I had an ancestral empowerment in my hand to draw three cards. To draw three cards. Yeah, that would be pretty nutty. <laughs> it would be nice, but uh, unfortunately, that is not the case. And so the buzzsaw trap is only for this attack, right? Not for the whole turn. Just for this attack. I mean, just for the one that it's played okay. against. Yeah. Okay. The exciting thing is that my follow-up to this is going to be a bonds of ancestry now okay. since the last card i played is a gust wave card this one costs two less 
uh, also has go again, but it also has when it attacks, I can banish a card with combo from my graveyard, search my deck for a card with the same name, banish it, and shuffle. Uh, you can play it this combat chain. I think I'm going to choose... Oh, wait, let me make sure I didn't. I don't have two Dishonors in here. That's very important. Okay, yeah, no, I'm gonna choose. Uh, I'm gonna choose Dishonor. And what's great about mm -hmm. Dishonor is it says, uh, when this hits a hero, if you control a Surging Strike, which I do. Um, oh, this one only counts about Descendant Gust Wave. Has yeah. to be. De has to be Descendant Gust Wave. Okay, let me think. My. I think I still choose this. It's still a. It's still a, a zero for four. Four, right? Yeah, it's four. Yes. Yeah, I think I still choose it. <laughs> yeah, because any other option here is less than that and doesn't have the combo enabled. Um, has to be the last attack. Yeah, they all have to be the last attack. Surging Strike was the last attack. Yep, okay, yeah, we're still yeah. choosing. We're still choosing Dishonored. So we're not gonna get the whole thing, but it's still gonna be a nice little- A four. Nice, nice little four. My th three card hand. Uh, so yeah, that is coming in for two with the, the bonds. Um, I will not block the bonds. Any reactions? I have no react, no reactions. All right, I take down to four. All righty, then I will throw my lethal dishonor at you for four. Uh, no blocks. Any reactions? Hmm, I this is suspicious. Um, no reactions. <laughs> From the arsenal, we will play tripwire trap and block four. And that will deal you one damage. Yes, it does. Down to eight. Um, that will block this out as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well. Okay, yeah, that's going to be it for my turn. I do have an end of turn trigger where I take a little more, more damage on my own turn. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. I go down to six. <laughs> go down to six from the Blood Rot Pox. The blood rep, man, you Riptide just can deal a bunch of damage on your opponent's turn. Like, hey, you, it you is can, it is the truth. You can attack me, but uh, you're still gonna take some damage. All right, and yeah, I, I couldn't pay for that. I had one floating, and the tunic, but it requires three, which is a which is a sad. It's just a sad. All right, it is your move. All right, I am going to. I have some interesting dilemmas here because I, knowing what I've seen so far, there's several cards I could see over the next few turns. Mm -hmm. And so I could, I could make a greedy play or the safer play. <laughs> I feel not that everyone will have watched all of the games we've played, but I feel that is the theme of of this uh this portion of the, the the gauntlet here it's like to greed or not to greed that is the question tis it nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and traps <laughs> of riptide you know a better player that wouldn't be playing right now a better player would know how many cards they pitched and they could run these numbers right now in their head <laughs> but me i'm just kind of guessing i'm just kind of guessing that i've seen a few can you give so, me a number crunch up duel? I don't know what that is, and I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> so I can play either of these cards. Okay, uh, we're going to do the, I think, the safer play, technically. We're going to go with the safer play. I think that's okay. the play we go for, the safer one. Oh my god, I just can't. I want to gamble so bad. <laughs> it's just so good. I don't blame you. I don't blame oh. you. you know All right, me. here's what we're going to do. We're going to Death Dealer. Okay. Pitching the Falcon Wing. That's free. So that we can load the Infecting Shot for one to draw a card. Yep. Yep. The gamble would not have paid off. I feel so... I'm so smart. I'm so <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to play Scout the Periphery here. All right, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, from that scout, the periphery, I am going to uh, then fire infecting shot, pitching this red falcon wing. Okay. Uh, so this is coming for eight. And okay. on hit, create a blood rot. On hit, be sad. Be sad. Okay, let me think of my turn. So my turn is going to be 
combination of these attacks. Probably you're at four. Mm -hmm. Um, that's kind of a nasty one. Unless you have, of course, collapsing trap, which is absolutely nasty. It's very nasty. It's like collapsing trap is one that the, the more I play against Riptide, the more I'm just like, I gotta think about it. Everything I have has go again. <laughs> it's like you could you yep. could trap any of my things. Um so I think no matter what, we're gonna block with this one. Which is a three block. It's coming in for eight. Eight. That's right. I think we also let's do the math here. Oh, do we do we need the Need to get these ones in. So three, four, five. Yeah, I would need all of them to, to do that. And so now I think, do I, do I take the greedy path or do I take the conservative block, and then just block, just block it out, like, and take some, or not block it out, do I block it out or do I take some damage? So I, I could do this, mm -hmm. take four, go to two which is not good if i get a blood rat box <laughs> just for the record not good being at two <laughs> the blood rat box no i got a block yeah that's a bummer so we'll do three four five six and the mask gets in there seven eight we're blocking it out all right how much you blocking three it's a eight four total. all right yeah it's, eight it's, it is it covers it up yep four and four no blood rot my, this time. My poor mask. Yeah, I don't, I don't think the damage was there to actually feasibly push the win. Um, so, as much as I wanted to be super, super greedy, super, super greedy, um, but I could still have an okay turn. I could still have an okay turn, and actually, that this, you can. This is the play that actually plays around uh, collapsing trap a bit. So, I am going to attack you first. With a red surging strike, pitching this uh, be like water floating one. So it's okay. five with go again. All right. I'm going to go ahead and block four here. Blocking Captain's Call, Plunder Run. Two cards in hand. Okay. Take one. Take one. Cool. Sounds good. I would like to attack you with a Kodachi with, for one with go again. I'll take one. I would like to crack, uh, use my tunic and attack you with my other Kodachi for one. Take one. All right, go to one. Alrighty, that's going to be my turn. I was debating over basically that same turn plus another uh, three and threatening a, a tun uh, mask trigger, but alas, but alas. Alrighty, drop, pass to you. All right. On my turn, I'm going to play Ravenous Rabble Red with Go Again, showing, hey, a collapsing trap. Yes. This comes for two with okay. Go Again. Good things to note. One, this is only attacking <laughs> for two, but also you have a collapsing trap next. That is true. Is so nasty. Okay, so I'm, I'm probably going to block this. Definitely going to block. You have another card in your hand, right? I do have another card in hand, and this does have Go Again. Uh, do be go again -y. um all right let me think let me think let me think i uh, pitch that and then i can do some stuff yes yes block for three bonds of ancestry no reactions i pass reactions as well all right arsenal pass all righty let's See if we can do some... Oh, you have a collapsing trap. Ah, I know you have it. I know you have a collapsing trap. Okay. It exists. Okay. Playing around the collapsing trap. I think we have to start with this then. All right. So we're going to start with the... Yeah. I, it, does, it means I can't do my whole thing, but it's, it is what it is. We're going to Descendant Gus Wave for three with Go Again, pitching this Visit the Floating Dojo Floating 2. Mm-hmm. Coming for three? Coming in for three. All right. You, you hey, you know that collapsing trap? Nah. Right? <laughs> We're going to play that collapsing trap. That's going to trigger, deal you one point of damage, and it's going to make you discard your card. Are you sure, though? Are you sure? Okay. You know what makes this the biggest heartbreaker for anyone watching 
this video, if you are a fan of Katsu, the card in my hand was the exact card that would have been... It's it's a Bonds of Ancestry, all right. It's, it's a Bonds of Ancestry. So this, this card by itself represents another 8 damage that I will not be able to play this turn. Collapsing Trap is very good. Alrighty. Um, I have no, I have no reactions to that. Uh, None as well. Alrighty, I'm at five. Um, I do have two floating resources, so I'm gonna kadachi you for one. Okay. And everyone typing in the comments, yeah, I, I did miss my tunic. I did miss the tunic trigger. Uh, it's a friendly gain. I'll allow it, unless it kills me, in which case I will not allow it. Yeah, I, I have a feeling. Well, we'll see. I think I think one of us is going to die in the next couple turns either way. I might die to traps. You might die to Kadachis, but I'm not sure if this tunic is going to get to three. All right. On this one, I'm going to react from Arsenal with Tripwire Trap. That's going to deal you one damage, and uh, it is yeah. going to force you to either pay one or your effects don't trigger. I go to four. I will, I will not pay the one. <laughs> I do not want to pay that. Deal. All righty. Okay. Final Kadachi for the turn. All right. Uh, I will block two here with Scout the Periphery Yellow. All right, sounds good. That's gonna do it for my turn. I would like to there pass, it is. pass on over to you. Bottom that floating dojo. Eventually, my hand is just gonna be <laughs> visit visit the floating dojos. I have a very simple turn. It's going to be play Codex of Blood Rot. Oh, no. And uh, each oh. player puts a card from their hand face down into their arsenal. Oh, I'm going to no. place this one face down into my oh, arsenal. Okay, so... How many how many cards do you have in your hand? That's it. Okay. Just this one. That's okay. now in my arsenal. I. Th oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll put this face down, and I will get a Blood Rot. You will get a blood rot, and uh, I will pass my turn. Oh, okay. I will gain a ponder, by the way, from that, and then that ponder will pop, and I will draw a card. Okay. I will draw three more. Okay. Well, I gonna try to gonna try to do it. Gonna try to do it. I will intentionally forget my tunic to, <laughs> to even it out with my last there turn. There it is. Even it out. All right, so... I don't have to worry about Collapsing Trap, which is good. So I think we just do the old Kadachi shenanigans. So I'll pitch uh, Be Like Water to attack for one with a Harmonized Kadachi. Okay. I will block with a Lace with Blood Rot for two. Okay, sounds good. I will attack with not a Kadachi, but my card from Arsenal. This is a blue Surging Strike for three with Go Again. Okay. I will block with a yellow Bolton Shot for three. So I do have a reaction here. Sure. I would like to Ancestral Empowerment to give it plus one and draw a card. All right. And you got me. Oh, no that. defense reaction in the hand. Oh, that was yep. that was uh, I was on the wire here. I was like, you know what? If you draw four traps and you just kill me on this turn with four traps, so be it. Ooh, I thought I had more defense reactions. I guess they were all towards the bottom. Just two left. Ah, too bad. Nice. Well, Not enough traps, I guess. Just need hey, that's the that's the trick with Riptide. Just need more traps. Just gotta get more, gotta need more traps. Yep. Well, indeed. Thank you so much for the games, my friend. Um, they were uh, honestly, it was, it was a lot of fun playing against Riptide. There's a lot of like interesting plays. Like I said, you take a lot of damage on your own turn as you're getting hit by the traps and various other uh, like blood rot and all that kind of all that kind of stuff. I think it's a, a cool hero. I, I, I dig it. Yeah, I, yeah, it was a lot of fun to play. It's uh, it's really cool how you can build this deck so many different ways. So uh, definitely dive in and build the deck your own way and see what you like about it and what yeah. you want to change. Yeah, in the comments down below, let us know what your pick for your favorite hat for Riptide. Everyone has a favorite hat for Riptide. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned for more videos here on the Flesh and Blood YouTube channel. We got at least one more game, at least one more match here in the... Uh, 
Outsiders Skirmish Gauntlet. We'll see you then.